Exploratory Data Analysis, or EDA for short, is an integral part of the machine learning workflow. It is during this stage that we can spend up to 90% of a project's time trying to understand the data, carry out analysis, and also carry out data quality control. And that is all before we get onto the fun stuff of machine learning. Hey guys, I'm Andy, and if you already knew that, then welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at a very simple but powerful Python library called Pandas Profiling. And this library helps us speed up the EDA phase of a data science and machine learning workflow. The EDA phase of a data science project allows us to get a first look at the data. This phase is very critical in the data science workflow as it allows us to understand the data and understand its contents. And based on that, we can then decide whether we need more data for our project or whether we can carry out data repair or create new features. When working through data on a Python training course, the data set that you're often given is cleaned and ready for use, which means that there are very little issues with it. You will typically be carrying out data analysis using pandas or using matplotlib to create simple visualizations. First, you will load in the data using pandas and then start to explore it using df.info, df.describe to get a basic understanding of what the data contains. And then you'll move on to matplotlib to create some data visualizations such as bar plots, histograms, and scatter plots. So this may be great if you're not under any pressure or you're just starting out in Python. However, when working with real world data sets, there are often deadlines that you need to meet and also the data that you're presented with may not be the cleanest of data. So you may have data that is very messy and requires a lot of attention to detail as well as data cleaning and repair. If we carry that poor data quality through to our machine learning model, then we can have knock-on consequences for any decisions that are based on that data, whether they be financial or managerial. So doing EDA using the traditional Python methods with pandas and matplotlib may be very time consuming, and this is where a number of libraries have been developed to speed up this process, and we can get very detailed results very fast. So in today's video, we're going to look at a library called Pandas Profiling, which has been developed to speed up that EDA process. With very few lines of code, we can generate a very detailed report in a very quick manner. So this allows us to explore our data very easily and very quickly. So let's go over to our Jupyter Notebook and explore some data. So the first step, if you've not already got Pandas Profiling installed, is to install the library. So you can do this through the terminal or the command prompt, or you can do it from inside Jupyter Notebook. And you can do that using an exclamation mark, followed by pip install pandas-profiling. And then it will go out to PyPy, and it will go and try to get that library. So as you can see here, I've already got this one installed. So I can shrink this cell down by double clicking on the left hand side of it. And then we can also comment that out. So if someone else is using this notebook, they can uncomment this and then install the pandas profiling library. So the next step is to import the libraries we're going to be working with. So we're going to be working with pandas. So import pandas as PD. And then from pandas profiling, we need to use an underscore here rather than a hyphen. Import profile report. So that will take a few seconds to import. And once we have it, we can then start using these libraries. So the next step is that we're going to load in some well log data. And I'm using well log data as an example here, but this can be applied to any data type or any data set that you have. And then, and then you can analyze it in the same way. So for this, I'm going to create a data frame, call it df. And then I'm going to call upon pandas pd.read underscore csv. And then I'm going to pass in the location which I will just copy and paste uh, in just to make things easier. And then with this particular file, missing values or null values are represented by minus 999 values. So we need to take that into account when we're loading it into a data frame. That way the minus 999 numbers get converted to nans or not a number. And there we have our data frame loaded in. And we can just check that by calling upon df.head. And there we have our data frame. We can see that we've got a variety of columns in here or features or well log curves, depending on how you want to refer to them as. So we've got our depth curves, uh, we've got our gamma ray, different resistivity curves, and we've also got our 
a rho B and neutron porosity curve here at the end. So now that the data is loaded in, all we have to simply do is create the report. And we can call upon report is equal to profile report, and then we pass in the data frame into the, the parentheses or the brackets. And now we can call upon that report and it will begin generating and summarizing the data. So this can take a while depending on how many curves or how many features you have in your data frame. So in this case it's running 391 calculations, everything from working out the statistics uh, on the data frame to presenting it into an HTML format. So this could take a bit of time, so we'll come back once that is done. So once the process has completed, we then get the pandas profiling report like what we have here. So this report contains multiple sections and these can be accessed through the hyperlinks at the top. So we've got an overview section, variable section, interactions, correlations, missing values and sample. So we're going to go through each of these and see what they contain. So first off we have the overview section and this contains a further three tabs. So we have overview, alerts and reproduction. On the overview tab of the overview section we have data set statistics. So we know how many variables or features we have in our data set, the number of ob observations that we have, as well as the number of missing cells within that data. And then we've got about 20% of the entire data set that is missing, and that is the individual cells that make up the entire data frame. And then over on the right, we can see that this entire data set is numeric. If we had any text-based features, then these would come up as uh, text. Then we have the alert section, so this is just alerting us to any issues that the pandas profile report has identified, and in this case the majority of the issues are around highly correlated variables. So the first one here, depth, is highly correlated with TVD and 13 other fields. And as we scroll down we can see that the most common issue is highly correlated variables. And then once we scroll past that we can then see which curves has the most missing values, so some of these curves have over 75% of missing values. If you're familiar with well log data, then some of these logging measurements are only recorded in certain parts of the well, so there is a large majority of the data that is missing. And we can see we've got highly skewed data, and this is probably associated with these being logarithmic measurements, so they're going from uh, values as such as 0.02 all the way up to about 2000 or 20,000 ohm meters. The next section of the report is the variable section, and this is the individual variables or the details about each of these variables. So here we've got depth or DEPT, and we can see that we've got 34,241 distinct values, and it's 100% distinct. Then we have our minimum and maximum ranges. We've got a histogram showing the values as, as the value increases, and we can see that it is uniformly distributed as we would expect with depth. Same with TVD, as a total vertical depth, and we can see that that also covers a similar range. And this is likely to be a vertical well, rather than a horizontal, where we would have a difference between TVD and measure depth. And then we're on to our real logging curve. So this is our gamma ray, and we can see that we've got 94.7% of distinct values, and 69 of them are missing. And that equates to about 0.2% of the data. So we can see over on the right we've got our histogram, we can see we've got a bimodal distribution here. So this is likely to be associated with sand shales. So sands typically have low gamma ray values and shales typically have higher values. And we can see that we've got the mean value here and we've got some warnings here that we've got high correlation. And if we hover over this we then get information about what it is correlated with. And as we've got quite a, a large number of measurements in here we do have to scroll quite a bit. And then we can move on to the interaction sections. And this allows us to see how the curves or how the features interact with each other. So if I take depth and depth, we then have a one to one relationship. And it's presented in this tiled scatter plot. So this allows us to identify where the majority of our data is. So if we go to gamma ray or GR, and then we compare it with row B, uh, we can see that we've got the majority of the data over here uh, around about the 140 API value and about 2.6 grams per cc. So we can see how well or how uncorrelated each of the variables are. 
Now if we want to look at the correlations a bit more, we can then look at some of the common statistical methods, like Spearman's, Pearson's, Kendall's and Phi K. So we'll go to the Pearson's correlation, as that is one I'm most familiar with. That gives an indication of how well variables are correlated with each other. So values of minus 1 or positive 1 indicate that we've got a high correlation. And values that tend towards 0 indicate that the correlation is poorer. So as we can see here, we've got the scale bar going from positive 1 to negative 1. And as we would expect along the diagonal, where we're comparing GR against itself, we then get a value of 1. If we have a closer look at this chart, we can see that some values are strongly negatively correlated with each other, and some are positively correlated with each other, like the TVD and the depth curve. So this just helps us identify where we've got multicollinearity between our variables before we move on to machine learning. The next section is looking at missing values, and if you've seen my missing no video, you'll recognise some of these charts. So first up, we have a bar chart indicating the count of total values for each of the inputs, or each of the features. So we can see here the majority of the curves, or the features, are, have complete values. However, some of the features over here have less values. And then we can go through each of the charts, so we've got a matrix chart, and this just gives us an indication from the top of the data frame to the bottom of the data frame, and we can see that these features over here occur towards the bottom of the data frame, or at deeper depths. And then we can look at the heat map and identify whether there's a correlation between the missing values. For example, these features here, which are resistivity measurements, these tools are usually run together, and if one is missing, then the other one will be missing as well, as the tool wouldn't be present. And the same with the nuclear features over here, where we've got delta rho, PEF, rho B, and TNPH. And we can see that they are all highly correlated, or the missing values are highly correlated between them. Then we have the dendrogram, and this just shows the relationship between the, the missing values. So as you move down the dendrogram, items that are closer together indicate that there's a strong relationship between the missing values. And then as we move further up the tree to here, we can see that this group over here, or nuclear measurements, has a different pattern of nulls compared to the ones over here. And then we have the sample section, which just gives us the header of our data and tail of our data. And that completes the profile report. So it's very simple to use and very easy to navigate. As you've seen, Pandas profiling is very easy to use and we've generated a very detailed report using a minimal amount of code. So be sure to check it out for your next data science project. But wait, don't click off this video just yet. If you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. And if you want to see more content from this channel, click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.